Hey, I'm Allison from Learning at the Primary Pond. I'm a literacy specialist and former classroom teacher. And in this video, I'm gonna share five math activities that are my favorites right now. Math involves so much like practice and repetition and routine, and that's awesome, but it's also important to keep it fresh for kids. So I'm gonna share five fun activities that can help you do just that. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to do that. Hit the little bell also to be notified every time I post a brand new video about teaching kindergarten, first and second grade. Okay, so if you know me or learning at the Primary Pond, you know that I really focus on literacy. That is my favorite subject to teach. However, I also, before I became a literacy specialist, was a classroom teacher. I really love teaching math, science, social studies. I love it all. So you will see that sometimes I share resources that combine both of those. And today we're actually going to focus on math. Literacy and math, of course, they go together hand in hand, especially as students, you know, get older, they're expected to read word problems. Student performance in one area can definitely affect performance or just like their affect, their feelings about school in general, which affects the other. So it's all connected. If you've ever seen a student's struggles in one area affect another subject, let me know in the comments, just type yes. I feel like this can be so common where, you know, it's not like they may just have troubles in one area, it may be more than one. So let me know yes in the comments if you have ever noticed that with a student. Okay, so let's get into these math activities that can help you keep learning fresh for your students. So my current favorite activity number one is this number line puzzle setup. So I don't have all the pieces because I can't hold them in my hands, but what you do is you or the kids can cut them apart and you put them like on the floor so it can become kind of like this bigger interactive thing. It's not huge, but it's a decent size. And so you put it on the floor and then kids use it to assemble numbers, which are on cards. You could do uh, just skip counting by ones, which is not skip counting, just counting by ones if you're working with like kindergarten. But what I was trying to say is you can also do skip counting. You can have them do by tens or you can have them do by twos or by fives. You could even have some kids working on counting by tens and another set of kids working on counting by fives. You can also have a recording sheet where once they actually physically lay these down to extend the activity, they then also write the numbers. So there's so many options here and it's really very simple, but kids love these number line puzzles and how like interactive and hands-on they are. Activity number two is this type of spin, solve, and cover game. So it's a very simple, note prep for you, which is always a plus. And um, so you would just need, like the, the kids can either use a paper clip, like they put a paper clip flat on the page and then they hold a pencil perpendicular and they spin the paper clip around the tip of a pencil to make the spinner. I also have some like clear spinner overlays that you can put here, but however you wanna have the kids spin, they spin an equation, they solve it. They can use like a whiteboard or a scrap piece of paper um, if they need help or, you know, to draw out models. And once they've solved it, then they get to cover the appropriate cookie, in this case, with a counter. So like if they spun nine minus four, they solve it, and then they get to, sp they get to cover the number five. So the spinner element keeps it fun, exciting, making it feel like a game. They're really just solving equations. But again, we're talking about ways to keep things fresh for our kids. This is just another great way for them to practice. And you can do this with all kinds of skills. Activity number three is play-based activities. Now I love to have the kids play like restaurant or you could do literally anything like a cafe, a bakery. And then if you give them a list of items with prices like we have here, they can, you know, you can make it open-ended where they are like writing their order down and somebody else has to add it up and tell them how much money it is and they pay with like pretend money. So you can make it really interactive like that. You can also do something where you have like word problems for older kids. I think this is from our second grade math library. And, um, you know, they're actually answering questions about this. If you do something like this, it is still fun to give them a little bit of time to play and, you know, act out whatever sort of scenario you have for them. But math can absolutely involve play. I love to involve play whenever I can. Activity number four is matching puzzles. Now you can do these for so many different skills and you know, you can make it as easy or as challenging as you want. This is really good for like kindergarten or maybe like early first grade where they're matching like the numeral and then like it's um, like the little unifix cubes or little blocks and then in a 10 frame. And so 
You would do this with like equations, right? Like different ways to make 10, they have to match them. There's just so many options. And if you laminate these, then you can reuse them year after year. I actually like to print on cardstock and then laminate to make them super sturdy. And again, it feels fun because it's a puzzle. Okay, my last favorite that I wanna share with you is really just kind of like a general category of type of activities. I do have one specific example to show you for Valentine's Day. But again, this is just an example. So it's like we've got equations, simple equations that they're working on, and then they're matching them to these, you know, the, the sum or whatever it is on these little hard cards. So it's very simple, right? We literally just took like Valentine's Day clip art and they're practicing equations and then they're matching them. And you can also have them write on a recording sheet once they've solved the equations, but it kind of has this like hands-on element. And again, math requires so much practice and repetition. Whenever you can incorporate something holiday or seasonal, you could literally make, or if you're a member of our math library, use the same activity, but put like a different holiday or seasonal spin on it and it becomes new and fresh for the kids. So I really enjoyed sharing these five activities with you. Everything that you've seen here comes from the Learning at the Primary Pond Math Library. We have it for kindergarten, first and second grade. I got the idea for the math library because before I became a literacy specialist, it was always like either first it was like teacher books, right? Like making copies from teacher books or searching on Google. I was always like math worksheets, math activities, math centers, like searching, searching, searching for stuff. And I just thought like, what if teachers had a place where they could just go and have so many math activities organized by skill for centers, extra practice, differentiation. So that's where the math library came from. And everything you saw here comes from either the kindergarten, first grade or second grade math library. I will include a link with this video so that you can learn more about it. It is a huge, huge time saver if you think about like all that time you spend looking for math stuff. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.